and now we can just have a quick look at how I've put together the rendering of this. We can just look, let's just put in a little tidy backdrop and just call this fields and the cloud is down here and MPM Soul is down here and you know everything looks kind of smart. So there's a few different ways that we could colour this. I wanted to be able to colour each individual letter differently and as you see an example that is what I've done. There are other ways of doing that. We could add a colour node to each source and colour it like so. However, I wanted each of my balloons to have, um, what happens then if we put a colour source on each NPM cloth? We still got one output coming out, which means we go to one shader. And that means that everything has got to have the same specular, the same reflection and that kind of thing. I wanted different reflections. I wanted sub with subsurface, I wanted some maybe with transparency and you can't do that that way around. So what we could do here is we've basically got an array coming out of here as you can see down there type array object right which means that all of those sources are inside here and we need to get that information out so it's quite simple really we just need to put in a get from array node okay and we can number these so the index of this is z z which will be b because that's the first source in our array. And with our sources labeled, that should help our cause. So I'll just copy and paste this um, a few times and we'll just create different index numbers which will give us the seven letters. But first of all, let's just put in an assign material like so and I'm going to put that into there and then coming out of uh, the surface material I'm going to put in a standard surface material which is within Bifrost an, an Arnold shader or you know you can use one from the hyper shade drag it in whatever you want to do obviously this is error in because nothing's plugged into it and so I'll just plug that into the array there and we'll plug this into here now we know that this is the shader for B, so we'll just put that up there and I'll just, I might just flatten this down first a little bit. And yeah, I'm just gonna go Control C and then here Control V and that's gonna be our letter I. And so I'll make the array index one. Plug that in. And then We'll control C, control V. We'll make that two because that'll be the F. So we've got zero because zero is our first index. Zero, one, two, control V. Three, control C, control V. Four, five, and we only need to go up to six because we started from zero, which is seven digits, seven letters in the word Bifrost. Let's go up to six, and then we can plug all of these in separately, separate outputs. Bring this output down here and then we can just go in and start to recolor so I'll just select my first input there and I may decide that you know I want this to be blue or red or whatever and then I might want a bit of metalness to it and not so much specular etc and so that then turns red if I just rewind there and then I can go through and color everything differently with different types of specularity and subsurface and transparency etc which I'm not going to go through and do them all because you've seen the example um, but if I just rewind and play now we'll start to see all of them showing up 
in fact let's just do a quick play blast and so yeah you can see the different colors coming up there and then yeah it would just be a case of just doing some rendering any kind of rendering that you know you're happy with for me I just put in a standard just an, an Arnold light sky dome light and added a HDRI and lit it so that we got the end result that we wanted and yeah so that's uh, that's how I built this obviously we can tie the disc graph up a bit and whatnot you know let's just put a great big box around it there and just call it shading and once again now you've set this up like once if you've saved off the npm source you never have to do that again in fact if you wanted to and you were you know feeling dangerous you could perhaps go into your first source and be like actually no i want to create all of this as uh, one node because I don't like loads of nodes going around and if you did that you could do like you know select this the inputs will not come through but you could select the scatter the instances that and that and then you could select the simulate npm as well and the solver and the collider and you could be like right let's compound that and yeah we could just right click create compound and that compounds up the entire thing obviously we're going to get loads of madness going on but look, we'll just cut all this off cut all this off we can pause the graph go in and see that all of our various parts that create that node are here now it's brought in a bunch of sources that we don't need because they're not actually plugged in no, I was being a bit lazy there, but we could just go and delete these few ports that we don't need. Delete, 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 and yeah, we'll delete that as well. And so then, really, on your port, you'd want to just start naming things. That's if you wanted to expose it. But yeah, you could you could create one node where you could actually just play with all of the settings by feeding back various attributes back to that one node. That's a bit much to be honest. Really, you just want to do what we've done, and that's just create a node where you can input certain things. So, like, if we go back, we could just go to that compound. We can just name it whatever we want to name it. It doesn't matter what it looks like at the moment, but we could just call it NPM Balloon Solver. Let's publish it. NPM Balloon Solver. Publish. And then if we're in a new graph somewhere, we can just type in NPM. There's the Balloon Solver. And if we right click and explode, we're not bothered about these inputs but it all opens up and everything is there ready to go only reason it's not working is because we need to plug in elements to this you know like the ball for the instances and the collision objects but yeah that's just amazing 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 thing about Bifrost so that you know you don't have to do all of this again I'll just go back a few steps but that is it guys that is it I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough again NPM super powerful if you what I do what I like to do is I like to look at effects that have been done perhaps by other softwares that are a little bit more geared towards design and motion design um, figuring out oh actually can we do this in Bifrost because you could just look at Bifrost cloth and think to yourself oh it just simulates cloth for clothes but that's not the case if you just think differently just think outside the box a little bit and then you start to create your own tools that can do things that other softwares can do and then some so yeah awesome take care guys thanks a lot